So how does the brain form and store memories? By understanding this question, it allows us to find out more about what the brain prioritizes during this process. And if we can understand how it prioritizes these memories, then we can potentially inject more of this secret source into our own learning initiatives and optimize learning retention. To better understand the secret source, let's have a look at how the brain forms memories. Memory storage is often modeled as four phases. The first phase is encoding. When an experience or sensation is initially captured and temporarily laid down as a short-term pattern in the hippocampus, encoding seems to happen something like this. Cursory impressions come in directly from the senses and are processed in their relative lobes. These separate streams are then transferred to the hippocampus, where they are quickly woven together in a micro-experience. From there, the hippocampus helps us decide, in a sort of reflexive way, what is worth our attention, and hence what will be shuttled on to the more familiar short-term memory, instead of being discarded and overwritten by the very next thing that you see or hear. Secondly, that encoded proto-memory has to survive consolidation, a natural process that gets rid of unimportant things that fill our senses all day long like the stuff you ignored on the supermarket shelves to the right and left of the Fruit Loops you picked up and put in your cart. The process of consolidation is how the brain decides which short-term memories are worth saving. The hippocampus, that sensory processing workhorse, takes these inputs and evaluates what should and shouldn't be preserved in a couple of ways. It compares it to existing memories to see if you recognize them. For example, if you knew the song playing at the car wash today, you might remember it later. If it's an unfamiliar song, you may not remember that music was playing at all. The hippocampus also reviews the inputs to see whether there was an emotional or physical component. Proto-memories that pass through this process are then sent on to storage. Third is storage, which is sometimes combined with consolidation. In this phase, the memory moves from the hippocampus to its permanent home in the cortex. When short-term memory gets the electrochemical signal that something's meaningful, engages the body, or is otherwise important, it hands that proto-memory off to long-term memory for storage. Long-term memory is functionally infinite and can last a lifetime. But that doesn't mean accessible, and long-term memories can be difficult to retrieve. Long-term memory is stored all over the cortex and comes in many different flavors. Different parts of your cortex are used for visual, verbal and spatial memory. Other categories of memories include episodic, which stores events like I went shopping today, and semantic memory, which stores facts like tequilas from Mexico. Procedural memory, also known as muscle memory, stores the ability to perform tasks and skills. It's acquired through repetition and is the reason that you can play baseball or piano without stressing every time over the complexity of a slider baseball pitch or a musical scale. And finally, there's recall when a memory is consciously retrieved to be experienced and strengthened anew, and every time a memory is recalled, it's essentially relived. You know every guitar riff to a song because you've experienced it countless times, both actively listening to the recording and passively remembering it in the shower, etching a deep and persistent pattern in your mind. To recall a memory physically is to try reliving the experience again, when we can't come up with a particular memory we know we should have, we instinctively try to recreate the scene of the crime, like, I was standing under that tree holding my car keys, or to recall what was being said before or just after the missing element. For the vast majority of us, our memory issues aren't about storage capacity, they're about recall, which is why we're always searching for helpful tricks and hacks of one kind or another.